please leave control for the, for the slide. Yeah. That's right. <clears throat> I have a very simple story to tell you, and I do want to make it more interactive. So to the extent that any of you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt me along the way. You've <clears throat> heard of a near-death experience, the letters NDE, near-death experience. Just rearrange them, and NDE could be end. And that's what I experienced, or came very close to it. So this article that Moses very kindly, he did target me, and featured me, and um, I had to take off my shirt for the picture, much to my wife's dismay. Um, I, I was, I mean, th this was at the age of 64, two years ago, and there were some pretty interesting quotes, I think. Uh, you know, Moses has said it, that I worked out three hours every day, I was a vegetarian, I thought I was doing the right thing, my resting pulse rate was 25, my blood pressure was 105 over 65, and I thought, gee, this is fantastic. The doctors all told me that, you know, I'm doing great. Whatever I'm doing, they don't understand. Just keep doing it. Well, um, I guess one of the quotes that Moses latched onto was, I don't believe in going downhill in life. My philosophy was always to we grow we reach a plateau, and then we start to decay. But I wanted to keep it on the level as long as I could, and maybe a slight decline as we all have to suffer physical aging. And I thought I'd fall off the end of the cliff, and so I nearly did. The, um, <clears throat> one of the things that I found quite interesting in my workout and was quoted is that while working out, I engage my brain um, in assessing feedback of my body. And I was very much in tune with my body, how it felt, what I was doing, how it related to my mind, and the whole question of the brain-body connection and the vitality of the brain was something that I was addicted to. I would wake up, I'd feel tired like we all do, and by the time I finished my workout, it was fantastic. I was quoted as saying it's like in high definition. Everything was clear to me. I never got sick. I thought I was invincible. Well, it was in New York. I was on a business trip, and... I was walking into a restaurant at the Four Seasons Hotel, and I collapsed. I felt terrible. I, it was, it was a, a moment. I didn't know what was going on. I felt very dizzy. I'd been feeling dizzy. I walked up and down stairs at the Four Seasons Hotel in New York. And like a fool, I thought, well, gee, maybe it's just low blood sugar. I walk into the restaurant, and I pass out. I fell, and I hit my head against the maitre d's desk, and I cut my forehead. The, um, I guess, I just thought, as I said, low blood sugar, the maitre d's said, come on, let's, you know, have some juice and some honey and whatever, and I did that. People came running up to me, asking me, am I okay? Where am I? What's my name? And I felt fine, though I felt very, very dizzy most of the day. I went to bed that night, and how I nearly died or could have died was unbelievable. What an idiot I was. Well, um, two weeks later, I guess it was the 12th of June, I was about to work out, and I collapsed in my gym at home. My wife took me into, I called the GP who came over, and he was shocked. I'd weighed myself, I weighed 12 pounds more than I normally do. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was some, I'd eaten a lot of salt. Something was going on. Did I realize my heart was failing? 
and that I was building up fluid in my body. So I went into the hospital. My blood pressure had risen to 180 over, over 100. Oh, sorry, let me go back. This is me. You can see that I have, I'm wired up. I was in intensive care. My heart was stopping quite regularly for different lengths of pauses. The big white paddle was um, the attachment for the defibrillator. I had a big black one on my back. All the other wires were monitoring my heart. And during, I thought it was quite amusing. I mean, I don't, I don't look very happy there, but you know, being the center of attention, I, you know, I enjoy being the center of attention at times. So, you know, it was quite cool. And I never really considered <clears throat> the risk that I was at, the stage of risk I was at. I was so sort of excited in a way about it. <clears throat> I took my, I took this picture with my iPhone. The top line is the pulse rate. The 98 is the oxygen content. My heart was stopping. It, it happened on a couple of occasions. <clears throat> you can see my blood pressure is 142 over 96. Out of line for me. There was quite a lot of concern in the minds of the emergency staff. They didn't want to use the defibrillator because that wasn't the problem. The problem was that my heart was slowing down, not that it was in some kind of erratic pattern. So at about 11 o'clock uh, that night, the 12th of June, they gave me an emergency pacemaker. and. Uh, what it was, it was all done under local anesthetic, feeding a wire up my femoral, um, I, I guess, vein into the heart. And the, while I was talking to the surgeons, one of them said to me, gee, your heart just stopped for 15 seconds. So... <clears throat> There's the next day they said to me, you're really, you know, good for a pacemaker. They came in, they tested me. It was quite funny. You know, again, I thought it was quite cool. A wire sticking out my body, turning up the speed of my heart, turning it down. Realizing that I was pacemaker dependent, they gave me a pacemaker. You can see <clears throat> the pacemaker out there wires into the heart. The other wires are purely um, just the monitors that were still on me. And uh, I felt great. Everything was fine. My heart was beating at double the pace that it normally did. So I felt pretty good. Um, Sunny Brook did an article on me and What yeah, I, I, I had an incredible experience in Sunnybrook. You know, all hospitals do their work well. Um, I was particularly encouraged and felt a real, uh, I, I guess, I was on the same wavelength as the doctors that I was talking to. They ran this article, and as you see, it says, beating strong gets his life back. There, I think, were a couple of other quotes. Um, I said here, it was a rebirth experience. I could have been dead. I feel like I got a new lease on life, which is what, what I did. There was a few other um, things, I guess. I said, um, I was telling them about my fitness, and they actually think that my workout routine actually saved my life. The shock of me falling in my gym at home in the Four Seasons Hotel 
that shock, the adrenaline, got my heart started again. That's why I say in the Four Seasons Hotel, lying alone in a room after that near-death experience, and I'll describe my near-death experience, um, I, my heart could have stopped so easily, so easily. So this was the article, a rebirth experience, taking pictures of me working out in the gym. A lot of people say, I look, you know, for working out three hours every day, every day, you don't see much muscle there. I didn't want muscle. I wanted lean and, you know, really fit, low body fat, all those kinds of things for my own self-image and self-confidence. A few months later, in December of the year, I was on the beach. I looked fine. <clears throat> Thank God, you can see, if you look at my shoulder, my left shoulder, your right-hand side, you'll see a slight bump under the skin. That's a pacemaker. I thought it was cool. <clears throat> it's like having a new iPhone. I, really, it's, it, you know, I'm, I'm very, very... Uh, sort of familiar with. I love technology. I always buy the latest, greatest gadget. And I thought, pretty cool, you know. This thing is keeping me going in a way that I'd never been going before. My heart was beating double the speed, getting double the amount of oxygen. I was no longer a vegetarian. I felt terrific. And I think I looked okay. Well, uh, Moses came at me again and uh, said, let's, let's have a sort of wrap-up of where you are today, and this is where I am. You know, I didn't expect it. Who expects it? Who expects to be, you know, feeling normal, and all of a sudden, the lights go out? And that's, that's what happened. So... There are a couple of quotes that uh, may be worthwhile mentioning. And I think for, for many of you, um, you, could, you may relate to this because of other people in your lives or your own experiences. I said, I have no fear of death now. I have a tremendous appreciation for life. I always have but I've experienced how close life and death are. My life is normal. All I have is this little device. I wear it as a badge of survival. The near-death experience, I didn't see bright lights. So, Colette, maybe I'm going to hell. I don't know. <laughs> um, what I did feel, I've felt this incredibly warm blanket covering me completely over my head, around my body. Everything was dark. Everything was still. It was like everything stopped. It was so peaceful, so quiet, not a sound. And then I felt myself spinning and falling into darkness. But as I did, coming out of the darkness were faces. I didn't recognize them, but I could feel them. I could see their eyes. They were happy. I was happy. It was very peaceful. I wasn't fearful. It was like, you know, embracing, welcoming, a safe place to be. And then I started hearing this incredibly loud sound, the sound of like a helicopter. And it was getting louder and louder. And as it did, I could feel myself being thrown around back and forth, very physical and rising up and rising up and eventually feeling myself up somewhere and suddenly falling to the ground 
and coming out of my experience. The um, experience of being, <coughs> excuse me, thrown around was described <coughs> by some doctors as the sort of experience we go through when a child is born and we're going through the birth canal. Whatever it was, it was very, very physical, very physical. So what does this all mean for someone, an ordinary person like me, in terms of spiritual aspects? There are a couple of interesting things. About two years before this happened, I went to see a spiritualist, and she said to me, I'm getting a message from a woman who says, take care of your heart. I thought it was nonsense. My heart was fine. Everybody's told me so. That relates also to the fact that, um, you know, I guess in a business sense, I'd succeeded in many ways. Had I developed spiritually, you know, always aware of I could live inside my own head very much, you know, I'm, I'm a happy person, I love to be with people, but I also love my own company. So I often lived within myself. Some were my thoughts, my spirit, was I communicating to my soul? I don't know. But there were some things that I started realizing. Um, I did have a visitation years be a couple of years before this happened. Um, my wife's late father, I was, my wife was away, and I was lying in bed, and I felt somebody sit on the bed. And I opened my eyes, and I saw him. When I closed my eyes, he was gone. The... I told Colette that, you know, the other thing I had experienced in a spiritual sense was I had had a massage, an energy massage, and I experienced the, I guess, the various chakras, and I had reached a point in my life where I could lie in bed at night and see the violet light. The clouds, I would see the odd color here and there, but it was <clears throat> very, very much the violet light. And I'll explain, I'll read some things uh, relative to what some research that I did. You know all the answers, Colette, but um, were meaningful for me to try and understand this. The difference is after my near-death experiences, I see, I see the eyes, I see the face of a woman looking at me. A few quick things, I see Moses is coming up here. <clears throat> I was born in 47, seven and four is 11. I was 65 and 11 days, six and five is 11, 11 days later, I was in Sunnybrook Hospital. So I wonder if my next experience or confrontation with death will be when I'm 74, 7 and 4 is 11, 83, 8 and 3 is 11. Something is going on with the number 11. And one thing is I gave a talk at a Sunnybrook uh, charitable event, and the only table that was empty in the house was number 11. The people didn't show. So the last thing I will say is I will skip all the explanation about violet and the chakra and the meaning, but it's the closest point to, I guess, the soul consciousness, the power beyond us, as I like to think of it. But the one thing that I do know, that nothing is more important in life than life itself. Thank you.
I'm curious, Tony, um, your old colleagues on Bay Street, have they heard you give this kind of talk? No, this is the first time, other than the Sunnybrook talk, where I actually broke down, because when I looked at Table 11, and it represented that I could have not been there. Why Table 11 out of, I don't know, 30 tables that were there was number 11 empty? Nobody, um, and nobody's ever heard me speak this way. I hope I did okay, but uh, in any event, no. I'm curious to know what you think your colleagues would say about this turn in your life. You know, it's difficult for me to try and see the world through their eyes. But I would say generally, people who are so focused in business would just think of this, oh, he nearly died, that's okay. It's like he had a biking accident, he fell over, oh, he's back on his feet. I don't know, I can't judge them, but I can tell you the depth of my understanding and this whole experience has opened my eyes and made me much more aware about the beauty of life and the spectrum of life is far more than just working on Bay Street. It's a great message. Thank, Thank you. you.